it's good to have everyone along for the ride today. And uh, we're going to approach this at uh, breakneck speed. This is an extraordinary life. We're going to go over some lessons, tips, and advice for becoming the best version of you. And again, thanks for joining me. So here's the concept. In thinking about this, um, it came to me as many good ideas do while I was in the car. And I do some of my best thinking there where I'm listening to music and sometimes riding in silence even uh, with the top down on my convertible. So in 2008, a super group called Asia, some of you older folks might uh, know them, uh, released a comeback album, or was it a CD or set of tunes today? I don't know, whatever you call it, um, with all the original members. It was called Phoenix, and it was quite good on it. There was a song called Extraordinary Life. I recall listening to it for the first time, and it struck quite a note with me. The chorus was simple, and rather than reading it, thanks to fair use, um, and hopefully you guys will be able to hear this, and I'm going to turn my mic around. Um, I'd like to let uh, the late John Wetton go ahead and sing it. So. All right. So it didn't work out quite as well as I would have liked it, but um, it was something about someone looking back at their life and reflecting with the wisdom of the years. And about four years later, it kind of hit me after I'd been diagnosed with thyroid cancer out of the blue, um, what that really meant. But that's a story for another day except to say I'm okay, I'm fine. Um, but it's something that really changes your outlook on life. So when the 2.0 version of this conference rolled around, I thought I shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't take a life changing moment for you to realize that we all live amazing lives if we just take a second and think about it. So there it was, great idea. I figured I'd share my experiences and examples of how the you know, I've, my life had been filled with crazy, incredible stuff, the journey I'd been on, some of which you can see in the pictures here. Um, you know, life lessons I've learned along the way, et cetera, et cetera. And then my wife stepped in and said, nobody's going to want to hear about that. And I laughed because this happens pretty often with us. I'll come up with a great idea. I'll run it by her super excited. And then she comes along and course corrects me. Ultimately, though, whatever I'm working on at the time turns out better in the end because of the input that I've received. Her honesty made me think about things. So I did for about a day or so. And then the better idea was to contact all my friends and have them talk about themselves instead life lessons that they've learned focusing on their extraordinary lives instead of mine. I also told them it didn't matter a bit if it was cliche, but I wanted to hear the story behind their wisdom and, you know, why it stuck with them and remained a part of who they were. And then the small uh oh moment that I originally thought this talk was 45 minutes and instead of 20 minutes, which I have now to talk about, but, you know, I just want to apologize to those if I omit their story. Uh, I talked to nearly 20 people about this and they shared things with me. Um, but I envision this to be a talk given many times and hopefully it'll be complete with audience participation too uh, when we can all gather together again. So let's begin. I'll do my best Casey Kasem or Rick Dees or Ryan Seacrest, depending on how old you are, to relay the stories that make up my friends' extraordinary lives. Taylor Morden says, do or do not, there is no try. Yes, a little cliche, but the piece of advice Taylor gives, he always falls back on, and it was given to him at a very young age. He said he was maybe six years old when he first heard it. It came to me through a tiny mono speaker and a 13-inch television hooked up to a VCR playing what has since become his all-time favorite movie, The Empire Strikes Back. The advice came from a small green puppet 
Yet to the six-year-old version of Taylor, it came from a wise and weathered Jedi master named Yoda. Do or do not. There is no try. That's the best I can do. He said in his roundabout way of speaking, and I took this to heart even as a child, and I've carried it through to this day. As a lifelong creative, he says, I've tried to surround myself with other creative people. And at every turn, one common thing that I see is that many people like to talk about grand projects that they're going to undertake or agonize over the tiniest details of a plan before getting started. But I've always taken Yoda's words to heart and to a lesser extent, the words of Nike, as we all know, and just started doing. I may make a lot of mistakes and sometimes rush into things, but he says, I'm always doing. It also translated to not wasting time on projects that aren't going anywhere. And I think we can all relate to that. That's the do not side of the equation. Try as you might, if it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere. And the sooner you figure that out, the less time you waste. So there you have it. Do or do not. There is no try words to live by. Carolyn says, be bold and speak up. She says, I was always taught by my parents to be bold and speak up. When you're a new or junior person at work or in any setting, it may be intimidating to speak up. Or if you've got a new idea or maybe even a critique, you might feel that there are more experienced people in the group that know more than you or you'd be humiliated for offering a new perspective. Or maybe you're scared. You'll be chastised for rocking the boat too much. All too often, great ideas are never heard because somebody is afraid to speak up. So be bold and speak up. As I've gotten older, I realize it takes bold, fresh perspectives to progress in work and in life. Take a deep breath and speak your mind. If you have an idea of how to do something better or more effectively, she says, be brave and say it out loud. As one of those experienced people in the room, she says, I always appreciate new perspectives, and I think we all do. Sometimes we get set in our ways, and if somebody has a better way of doing something, she wants to hear about it. So do I. Christine says, work like someone's watching you. My dad taught me at work to work like someone's watching you, even if they're not. That made a huge impact on me from a very young age and gave me a strong work ethic and increased my character. There are no shortcuts, no halfway, 100%, even if it's not seen, noticed, or even appreciated. <laughs> Man, I've been there. Uh, plus, the reward is just for personally uh, knowing you did your best is job good enough. Do others do that? Not always. Is it frustrating, especially when you get the same reward compensation as uh, others around you and nobody sees their shortcuts? Yep. But it's nice to look at yourself in the mirror and put your head on the pillow at night, she says, knowing you did your best and did an honest day's work. Bonnie, who is my son's fiance, says, when the tank is empty, dig deeper. Bonnie says, what can running an ultra marathon teach you about your life? Well, not too much, but it can help you reveal the depth to which you're truly capable of digging when you set a goal. Completing a marathon just to turn around and have to run another one is a suffer fest that puts your resilience and possibly sanity into a valuable spotlight. Nobody signs up to run 50 miles because it seems like fun. It's the type of distance that only starts to make sense when everything in your life, well, stops making sense. Bonnie says she's been blessed with the number of goals she's been able to set and been rewarded with the highs that accompany each achievement. However, she's been challenged more so by the extreme lows that accompany big goals. True wisdom there. When the lows come and knock in, they break down the door. Subsequently, she says, I've experienced the vitality that flows from digging yourself out from the lows and allowing light to shine on the highs. When the tank is past empty and you think you've hit your limit, I guarantee you can always dig deeper. Just how deep? 
Well, you might have to run 50 miles to find out. If you can walk on water, people will say it's because you can't swim. It's so true. When you set a goal, there'll always be doubters or naysayers, and there'll always be obstacles that are placed in your path. Still, no matter how low you get buried, you can always dig deeper and prove to everybody, but most importantly, prove to yourself what you're truly capable of. Greg Ross says, find a way to get it done. Says a piece of advice uh, I follow came from a former boss at a retail chain store. I was an assistant manager, manager trainee, juggling multiple responsibilities and not doing any of them well. I was giving reasons why this or that wasn't done. And he said to me, stop giving me excuses and find a way to get it done. Well, he was devastated because he thought, you know, I'd given valid reasons why I hadn't finished my assignments, too many customers, I had a tuition problem to resolve, we were short an employee, but then I realized what my boss meant. I was finding ways to explain my mediocrity instead of rising to the challenge and getting a task to completion. I started coming in early, staying late, and finding a way to get it done. Then something weird happened, he says. I got better at completing my tasks. I started completing them on time within the workday. I became more efficient and success bred more success. My sales went up. My notoriety went up. This revolutionized my work ethic. Find a way to get it done applied to so much more in life, personal relationships, my health, and my hobbies. Greg's a teacher now, and he says, I hope I've inspired my students with the same life, only delivered in a much more palatable way. Captain Phil Smith says, don't be a virus, embrace a challenge. In life, you can find yourself in all sorts of situations, both good and bad, at work and in everyday life. What you do in them is what will define your character. If you're miserable, stressed, or angered, or blame other for your surroundings or situation, it infects those around you like, well, a virus. The alternative is to challenge yourself to enjoy the good times and fully embrace the challenging or painful ones as something to overcome. Some other good advice, he says, is to put some humor in it where and when you can, knowing that nothing ever lasts forever. Keep your faith. Forgive and smile when it hurts you to smile. Gary O'Brien says, remember your destination. For more than 20 years, he's been helping writers become published authors. They work together for many months, sometimes more than a year, writing, editing, revising, and writing a book's a pretty daunting task. How many chapters, how many pages, how many words for many first time writers, there's often a moment early in the process where fear sets in, kind of like when you have to do these sort of presentations. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't write a whole book. It's true. True, You can't write a whole book, not at once at least. Writing is cumulative. You write a chapter, a page, the first sentence, and then the next, and then in the next. You build piece by piece, step by step, and you keep your goal in mind as your destination. And each step is a stop along the way. He says it's true for everything that you do. Every step gets you closer to your goal. Remember the goal, but focus on your task at hand. It's like riding your bike for 100 miles or running a marathon. Man, what, what is with these people in marathons and <laughs> bike riding for 100 miles? You can only ride on the road you're on at the moment, Gary says, not the road up ahead. I think people like this love challenges. I know I do. The road you're on brings you to the road ahead. It doesn't matter what your goal is, writing a book, riding a bike, running a marathon, developing the next killer app, Gary says, or even an exhausted new parent or just getting through a really crappy day. The moment you're in, the step you're taking right now is the most important because it gets you closer to where or who you want to be. Chan Wong says, focus on the donut, not the hole. He has a quick story about a conference called Evo came about. And I, I've got a shameless plug here. 
um, for evoconference.org and be sure and go and register for free. Maxim is going to be a moderator for one of the panels that we're doing on September 1st. Uh, And of course, he's the director of your conference here. So be sure and see him in another venue. Chan says a couple of leaders were sitting down for coffee to bounce around ideas and holding a fun out of the box sort of conference for an organization he belongs to. While a few people kept talking about how tough and not feasible this would be to get done, I spent my time uh, contacting my connections to talk about the possibilities of making it happen. While others were constantly raising challenges and negativity, focusing on the whole, I was able to secure the potential location and timeline to have a fun conference via Facebook Messenger in less than a three-minute chat, focusing on the possibilities, fun, influencing impact, and the cool things for the event. It's always a choice of what we want to focus on, thus focus on things that create value, impact, and the possibilities that can make you and others happy. Good advice. Mike Tickle says, live bravely and boldly. Be bold and fearless in your career objectives. Cut your own path with a broad sword and never be afraid of failure. Many have said there's no greater teacher than failure, and he believes that is true. I do as well. Facebook or feedback, Facebook, feedback, good or bad, is always a gift. And every nugget of feedback you receive should be taken and analyzed for your own personal growth. Mike says, you might see a job posting for an awesome company you'd love to be with and know how you would rock it. But the job requires a BS in computer science, eight years of project management. And here you are with no degree. You've never even stepped foot on a college campus or only have five years of project matter management, et cetera, et cetera. But you have a resume with decades of experience. So what would you do? You'd do what Mike has done. Be brave. Write the cover letter with the you know, feeling and promote the best parts of you. Then when you get the rejection letter, if you get it, because that sometimes happened, take note of why you didn't make the cut. Mike's even been so bold as to follow up a rejection letter and ask the question, what I could do better. You might be surprised when you get a response. It's that sort of bravery, which makes hiring managers take notice. Mike says, never feel fear failure. If you do, you'll never move forward. The best person to manage your career objectives is yourself. You have nothing to lose by bravely and boldly cutting your own path. Jody is living the dream by default. She says, I'd love to tell you everything that I have accomplished can be attributed to the solid plan and dedication. She said, I'd like to tell you that. However, my life has been more of living the dream by default. I was blessed with a strong faith and courage, often to the dismay of those around me, where If a job or opportunity interested me, I went for it. The more intimidating, the harder I charged towards it. I've had many careers that on the surface don't seem all that similar, but each one gave me experience to accomplish the next. If I had one piece of advice, it would be to take chances, step out of your comfort zone. It's great to have a plan, but date it. Don't make a death to us part commitment to it. Jeremy, who's online today, hi, Jeremy, uh, (laughs) is living for a limited time only. He says, I've always been someone who likes to travel and experience new places and things, but it's almost indescribable how much it's meant to me to have new experiences through the lens of my two-year-old son's eyes. Gone are the days where I'd go on vacation and try to plan every minute of the day. Today, my goal is to slow down and take in as much as I can. In the past, you might have found me on the phone in a theme park, checking the news or browsing social media. But today, if you see me with my phone out somewhere, it likely would be that I'm trying to capture the moment with a photo or video. As I've grown older, I've felt more strongly that I should place value on experiences. So after having a baby and seeing how quickly something like a pandemic can come along and rob us of the ability to travel or spend time with family or friends, I'm motivated now more than ever to do these things. 
As part of that, I've also had to reprioritize my career so I could be present with my son. My advice then is to fiercely protect your personal and family time. Take note of what season of your life that you're in and stop working late. Stop working through lunch. Start planning real vacations and make time for your friends and family. Some mountaintops are not worth dying on. Chris says, we have many challenges in our life. Work from home, spouses, kids, the leaky faucet, the annoying neighbor, the supermarket that overcharged you for the carton of eggs. Some battles are worth fighting, but all too often we believe fights, even on principle alone, are always justified. Some are, but most aren't. Ask yourself one simple question. Do you want to win the argument or do you want to be happy? Because all too often they're mutually exclusive. There are many people and causes that are simply not worth an additional second of your time, nor deserve the satisfaction of knowing they got under your skin. Pick your battles carefully and fight the ones that truly matter, and you will be better off for having stood your ground. Then acquiesce to everything else and let others claim victory in the, as he calls it, shallow, unimportant mud wrestles because your time and emotional sanity are far too precious. You can still be right and let someone else feel like they've won the battle. Great advice. You can't go around planting your flag on every mountaintop. There are only so many summits within your strength to conquer. Climb only the peaks that matter so the other mountains can't take the leg out of you. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut short a lot of great people who I can make the slides available for later in order to get this all in in time. But I'm going to get to my own story. And that is magic is just around the corner. One of my favorite experiences was at a Gartner IT conference, being at a huge event, they actually bought out the Magic Kingdom Park at Walt Disney World. Attendees were dropped off backstage in Tomorrowland where there was networking, food, drink, entertainment, and more. Everybody else was content staying there and partying and instead, Curiosity got to me, along with a sense of exploration. I broke free of the crowd and I wandered out into the vacant park, eventually making my way down Main Street, USA, which is the entrance to the park. By the time I got to the halfway point, I heard some familiar music come over the loudspeaker and a voice said to grab a seat or a good viewing location because the Main Street electrical parade was about to start. So. As literally the only person on Main Street USA at Walt Disney World, I plopped down on the curb, where to my astonishment, the parade started and I watched it by myself. There was not a single person to the left or right of me, the length of Main Street USA in Disney World. I had to pinch myself. Things like this don't happen in real life, only in your dreams. And I was certain as Cinderella was waving to me and only to me sitting on the curb there that I was doing just that, dreaming. I, I was completely convinced it was a dream. I still have to convince people that this was real. If I hadn't set out to do something different than the herd, I would have missed out on one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in my life. Bottom line is you need to make your own adventures, get out and explore because there's magic around the corner. You just need to go look for it. And I'd like to thank everybody who participated in this project. I can see it expanding at some point. I could see videos coming. I could see like a little ebook. Um, but they've all enriched my life with their wisdom. I, I found out so many things about so many people, and it is and was so much more worthwhile than me telling you my story, rather relating their stories to you, because we all have amazing and extraordinary lives. And a big thank you 
to every one of the people, including my wife, who participated into this shortened presentation, even though they might not have made it. And this is where you can find me online, by the way. Um, I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn uh, or any one of the social platforms, uh, and feel free to stop by my real daytime job at IEEEUSA.org or my fun job that I've been doing for almost the last 25 years at intercot.com, where I run one of the largest Walt Disney World travel sites on the internet. So thanks, everybody.